Okay, in this mini tutorial we're going to think about the corticospinal tracts. So this is the major motor tract which descends through the spinal cord uh, and controls the activity of lower motor neurons. And this is the tract that we use for voluntary movements, particularly very precise voluntary movements. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, draw this pathway um, and look at the organisation, the somatotopic organisation within the tract. So we're going to draw the um, cerebral hemispheres here with the midbrain, pons, medulla and the spinal cord. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to draw on um, the midline as we always do, so we always make sure that we draw on the midline because we're considering fibres crossing over from one side to the other, so the midline is very, very important. Next, we're going to draw in the two halves of the thalamus, here and here, and we're also going to draw on the lentiform nuclei, remember that they contain the globus pallidus and the putamen, there and there. Okay, uh, and we're drawing those on because it's important structure. The internal capsule um, runs between the thalamus and the lentiform nucleus, and we want to be able to show that. Next, let's draw um, an upper motor neuron which supplies um, the upper limb. Okay, so if you remember from your homunculus, this upper motor neuron that supplies the upper limb will be found on the lateral aspect of the motor cortex here and what happens is the axons of this upper motor neuron pass down through the corona radiata and then into the internal capsule which is this discrete white matter pathway running between the lentiform nucleus and the thalamus then what happens is it enters the midbrain through the cerebral peduncle and it goes down through the pons till it gets to the medulla when it gets to the medulla, it crosses the midline and then descends through the lateral corticospinal tract in the spinal cord. At which point, of course, it synapses upon a lower motor neuron here, which then goes on to supply uh, muscles in the upper limb. Now, before we move on, Let's review those structures that we just described in drawing the course of the axon, looking at the image of the brainstem on the right-hand side. So we said that the neuron starts off life up in the motor cortex, it passes down through the corona radiata, then into the internal capsule, which is found between the lentiform nucleus and the thalamus, and then from the internal capsule it enters the brainstem at roughly this point here through the cerebral peduncle. And the cerebral peduncles, if you look at the image on the right, are here. Here's one cerebral peduncle, here is another one. And all that a peduncle is, is a bit of white matter that connects a hemisphere to the brainstem. There are cerebral peduncles connecting cerebral hemispheres to the brainstem, and there are cerebellar peduncles connecting cerebellar hemispheres to the brainstem. So this point here is where the cerebral peduncles are, and that's where the corticospinal tract is running down to enter the brainstem. Next, we said that the corticospinal tract passes down through the pons. Okay, so if you imagine here are axons in the cerebral peduncle, and they're passing down through the pons. They're, quite, they're running quite deep at this point, actually, but they're running down through the pons. And when they get to the end of the pons, they enter the medulla, and that's where they enter these structures called the pyramids okay so at this point here what we have are clear structures called the pyramids in the medulla so there's the left pyramid and there's the right pyramid and the py pyramids are these clear bulges on the ventral surface of the medulla which carry those corticospinal axons on their way down into the spinal cord so you can see them once the axons have passed through the pyramids, then they begin to decussate. Okay, so in the caudal medulla, they start to decussate, to cross over the midline. And in fact, you can see that if we were able to zoom in even more, we might be able to start to see at this point here, 
fibers crossing over from this pyramid on the right hand side over to the corticospinal tract in the left side of the cord. So this region here is called the decussation of the pyramids, okay? And that's an important region of the medulla where those corticospinal fibers cross over. So that's the trajectory of um, an upper motor neuron destined to drive the upper limbs, okay? Now let's use a different color and let's draw on an upper motor neuron which is going to be involved in controlling the lower limbs. And as you know from the homunculus, those neurons are represented medially in the hemisphere and their trajectory is the same, okay? They pass down through the corona radiata between the thalamus and the lentiform nucleus, through the cerebral peduncle into the midbrain, down through the pons, the decussation of the pyramids, and then down into the caudal part of the spinal cord, where they synapse on lower motor neurons, which drive the lower limbs, okay? So they have the same trajectory, uh, they just run more distally. Now, the topographical representation of the um, corticospinal tract is relatively straightforward. So if we do a cross-section through the top of the spinal cord here at this level, um, we're able to see what the arrangement of axons is with regard to different parts of the body. So if we do a quick representation of the spinal cord here in cross-section at that level, there is the grey matter, okay? The corticospinal tract lives near to the ventral horn, which makes sense since the lower motor neurons are in the ventral horn, so the lateral corticospinal tract is around about here. And it has a straightforward topographical organisation. That is, axons destined for the upper limbs are found more medially, and axons destined for the lower limbs are found more laterally. And you can see the logic of that if we look at the overview image to the left. Because we have to put these upper limb axons more medially so that they can peel off and synapse in the ventral horn earlier on. There'd be no point putting these lower limb axons medially because then everything would have to cross over and we'd get a terrible mess and we'd be wasting myelin and axon in making too much wiring. So this is the rationale for this arrangement. So what we have in, in the um, lateral corticospinal tract is that the um, arm is represented most medially, then the trunk, and then the leg represented most laterally. Okay? So those are the very simple basics of the corticospinal tracts. Um, you need to do more reading on this. There's a number of subtleties um, in this system. For example, um, not all of the axons cross at the decussation of the pyramids. About 15% or so remain ipsilateral, run down through the ventral corticospinal tract and then cross over at the level where their lower motor neuron is. Um, but for the most part, most of the axons cross over to give us this very clear pattern that we see um, when considering clinical neurology, that of um, brain disease on one side leading to contralateral neurological signs. Okay, so that's all I've got to say.